I just found out that I still have a spool of these LED lights and I thought I'd used them all. Apparently not. Apparently it's only half. Uh, and I don't know what to do with this. So if you guys think that I should put up more lights or you think there's something more interesting I could do with this, let me know. But uh, yeah, apparently there's a whole spool of this stuff. Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, which is actually today, I actually should have had this done sooner, but my computer is having a lot of problems and more and more people are throwing more and more projects at me, um, needing more and more of my help. Uh, it's just the curse of being useful. Um, but, uh, and I need to take my computer in to get it looked at. Anyway, um, so it is three in the morning and I'm having to record this and hopefully edit it and get it up within a few hours. So, but that's fine. Uh, I was actually up till like almost six in the morning yesterday uh, because I was having to get all caught up on a whole bunch of voiceover, which I should be done with voiceover. Now I only have like an on-camera audition to do. But anyway, and then I have a whole bunch of demos that I'm still in the process of finishing as well as some new editing projects that are being thrown at me and some big, big projects as far as education and coaching and stuff like that that might be moving my way, like two of those. So it's a lot, but it's fine. Slowly but surely, steady but steady. Um, steady but shit, steady, whatever. Uh, anyway, so today we're actually going to be covering something that, again, I have covered before in other videos, but I haven't done a whole video dedicated to this. So today's video is basically brought to you by a recent email that was sent to me by, I'm going to say student, I guess student. It's very hard for me to gauge what relationship I have with some of you guys. Um, but this is someone that I wrote a demo for, someone that I had been doing a lot of back and forth helping uh, over the years. And they asked a question that I had actually been asked many times and also something that I myself was concerned about and thought about and wondered whether or not it was true early on in my career. And many people have asked this and many new talent still think this. And there are actually some people that I guess there are some professional voice actors. I'm going to say professional because I don't know any true professionals that have actually said this, um, that would actually say this, that have said something along this line to, to make new talent fear putting out a subpar first demo. So the, the person in question, their uh, recent email was basically all on that topic. The fact that they were in the process of making their own demo, but they didn't want to just put out, put out anything. They wanted to put out something that was up to scratch and something that was high standard because they didn't want to put out a demo that would leave a bad taste in people's mouths or potentially get them blacklisted, basically. Something that would be so bad that people would, you know, like agents, managers, casting directors, directors would remember and thus further prevent them from getting any opportunities or auditioning or ever being looked at again in the future. Well, good news is if you are one of these people that has that fear or has had that fear or has wondered about something like that, uh, do not worry. That's not really a thing. It's not really a thing. Um, there are some people very, very small, small minority groups of people that might have some sort of vendetta against you or might have some sort of gripe to pick or might just be incredibly rude and incredibly stuck up. But that those kinds of people that would blacklist people just out of the gate for something as, as minor and as trivial as first demos, those are the kind of people that you wouldn't want to work with anyway. And those are the kind of people that aren't, 
you know, regardless of how good your demo might be, they might still, you know, be incredibly rude about it. Um, sure, I'm, I'm sure there are small demographics like that. Maybe I don't see that being something in the, the kind of industry side. I see that being more in kind of the, kind of the, a little bit more of the indie side. Like there are pockets of the independent uh, animation or video game or voiceover market where some people kind of have, you know, a chip on their shoulder or a stick up their ass or whatever. And they think they're better than other people and they're constantly, you know, causing, you know, drama. There's always going to be people like that. So it's possible that this kind of rumor has maybe sprung up from that kind of situation from people that, you know, are kind of anal when it comes to things like that. But that's, that's not standard. Those are not standard. I'm sure someone out there has an anecdotal experience. I'm sure something like that. Um, but that is not normal. That is not common, especially when it comes to the kind of Hollywood or industry side. No matter how bad your demo is, you're not going to get blacklisted or completely shut off or completely prevented from getting any possible you know, listen to later down the, the later down the line when you have a better demo, unless you go out of your way to be a complete and total prick, unless you do something that is like far beyond what is considered standard interaction, whether it's through email or anything like that. Like if you were to like post on social media, this big hullabaloo, you know, just throwing shade at people and, and throwing names around and talking crap. Um, that's the kind of stuff that would probably get you blacklisted. Not your demo. Not your demo. Not your resume. Uh, it is also possible that if you hound someone a lot, uh, like to, let's say there's a studio, like let's say you're trying to get into anime and you're just emailing all the casting directors um, endlessly. And I'm like talking like constantly, multiple times a month. That may get you kind of blocked. That may get you blacklisted. But that's only because, that's not because of your demo. That's not because of your voiceover quality. That's just from the being kind of grating on the nerves with kind of the persistence and being a bit extra when it comes to your methods of communication. If you're just sending someone a demo and it's through the usual channel, or an available channel, um, and it's your first interaction, you're sending a demo regardless of its quality, you're sending your resume and all your contact information, you're not going to get blacklisted. You're not going to get blacklisted. You would have to go out of your way to say or do something rude or offensive or mind-numbingly annoying in order for someone to have in their memory and store in their memory that they hate you. Because here's the truth of the matter. This is the kind of the behind the curtains when it comes to the casting, directing, and producing, and managing, and agent side of it, which is kind of the part behind the curtain people are afraid of because they don't know much about. When it comes to a lot of your fears, especially in this industry, a lot of your fears are going to be based on things that you don't know. This is going to be one of them. If you've never done casting, if you've never you know, been an agent or been a manager or done casting directing or you, you don't have an agent yet and you don't really know the in, inner workings of it, that kind of void in your knowledge terrifies you, whether you know that it does or not. And so that's a lot where a lot of this comes from. But on that side of the fence, the, the truth is they receive so many emails and so many contacts and so many demos and so many resumes and so many samples that it would be impossible, virtually impossible for them to remember you if they, if they just didn't choose to sign you or go with you or cast you. 
if they didn't do if they didn't cast you or they didn't decide to sign sign you onto the roster as an agent or a manager uh they don't they're not going to remember you you're going to drift into the void into just just the the general mass of thousands upon thousands of submissions that they get monthly especially if it's an agent um, or an agency they get so many submissions so if you send them a, a submission and it's subpar which most of them are sadly but you know just that's a sad truth most demos especially first demos even if they're made by a professional if you are have not been doing it for that long I've been doing it for that long, and you don't have that much experience, or maybe you're not that that comfortable in your own skin, or that comfortable behind a mic. No matter who produces it, it's it's going to be subpar, and that's fine. That's one hundred percent fine. But most of the demos that an agent gets is going to be like that, and they're mostly just going to be meh. They're not going to be horrible. They're just going to be meh. And what they're listening for are the amazing ones. Everything else is just going to be is going to be just a gray blur. Everything else, but they're listening for the amazing ones or the ones that are fill a, fill a void or a niche in their roster that they don't have currently. So let's say they don't have someone that has this particular style or or sound or flavor to their voice. That's what they're looking for. Regardless of the quality of their demo, that's what they're looking for. They're like, okay. This fills that kind of demographic. This fills that area that we need. Or if it's just a wow, amazing demo, then they'll remember that. But everything else is just a great blur. Both the meh and the horrible, which there are horrible ones. I'm not going to say there aren't horrible ones. But yours, chances are, are not the truly horrible ones. Okay? But even if they were, they just fall in this kind of non rememberable non-memorable category. They're not going to remember them. Okay? They're not going to remember them. And that goes the same thing with a director and casting director. Most directors and casting directors aren't going to save and hold on to files. They're not going to keep files because they get so many submissions anyway. They get so many submissions. If they were to keep every single demo and keep every single email and every single name and keep it on file, they would have no more room on their hard drive because they get so much, so much stuff sent to them, so many auditions, so many demos, so many resumes. So again, the only thing that they're looking for is, are they wowing me or are they delivering the, the, the performance of that character that I'm looking for? Anything else is going to be meh. Everything else is going to be a gray blur. They're not going to remember it. Again, you have to be really, truly, horrifically offensive in order for someone to remember you years from now. I mean, and that is not common, by the way. That is not common. I've had a few people that have approached me, emailed me, or people I've even met on set in person doing on-camera acting that were kind, kind of rubbed me the wrong way, that kind of were a bit douchey or stuff like that. Um, and, you know, or like, prima donnas and I don't remember any of their names I don't remember any of their names and even even some people that I've not cast or people that I didn't think were ready or people that I didn't think did an amazing job or even people that I thought did a terrible job I'll still accept their submission again because I, like a lot of agents, like a lot of directors and a lot of casting directors, I am fully aware that time has passed, that people do get better. The only person that I may not even listen to again is, let's say, I had open casting calls for many, many years. And, and there was someone who had been constantly contacting me, constantly contacting me, you know, you have any job or opportunities? I can do stuff for you. I'm like, no, that's fine. But then I have job. I have I have a posting and I have a job opportunity. It's open casting call and they submit, and it's terrible. It doesn't even doesn't even fit anything. It's absolutely terrible. The audio quality is terrible. The performance is terrible. They clearly didn't even read the script. All that kind of stuff. And then I don't pick them, but then they constantly are messaging me saying 
if I've selected them. And then years go by and more auditions and they keep submitting and it's the exact same quality and they never get better. And they just keep doing that. Even if I like respond, which I have many times responded and let them know, you know, hey, if you, you know, you didn't get, get the role this time, but this is what I would say you should probably uh, work on and keep an eye out for, for future opportunities. I've done that many times. Um, and many times that I've done that, the next time I have a job opportunity, someone auditions and it's someone who auditioned before that didn't quite make it last time that did a whole lot better the second time. But the only person that I would maybe not listen to their demo again, again, not blocking them, but would be someone that I can clearly tell is not taking it seriously, who has never improved over the years, never upgraded their their equipment, never improved their studio, um, and never, you know, uh, never got better at reading the script, never got coaching, none of that. Never changed their demo, never improved their demo, no, nothing. Never put any work into it. That might be someone that I might avoid. Not saying that I will completely block them, that I will, you know, prevent them from, from submitting or that I will put out a word, some kind of APB, uh, police police broadcast thing that don't hire this person, they suck. I'm never going to do that. It, you know, if they're not taking advice, if they're not improving, then I, be, I will just never hire them. But that's not the same as blacklisting someone. And again, that is a very strong minority, very strong minority. And like I've said, I've had people that have submit multiple times to a lot of my things. And Every time that they've submitted, after, you know, time has passed, they've gotten better. And that is, that is actually a lot more important to me than the quality of, of their demo. Is just knowing that they did improve between the two demos. And that's, you know, huge. That's, that's, that's phenomenal. I see that they, their first demo wasn't that great. Their second demo is pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. But I can see that there's a huge gap between, you know, how much they've grown. I can, I can see that they've grown. I can see that. I can see that they're taking it more seriously. I can see that their quality of their studio is better. And I can see their performance is getting better. That is actually a good thing. That's a very good thing. Because that means that I, I know that within this period of time, you know, However, you know, in the future, past that point, they're definitely going to be better and they might be ready. They might be ready and they might have, you know, uh, gotten enough coaching. They might have started, you know, really taking it seriously and they could be finally up to where I would want them to be if I was to hire them. But again, I'm not going to blacklist anybody. I'm not going to, you know, ban them. I'm not going to block them. That's not a thing. It's really not. And it's not a thing that happens in Hollywood. Because again, if we're thinking in Hollywood's, you know, level, when I say Hollywood, I mostly just mean big studios, um, you know, the industry. On their end, they get so many submissions, so many submissions. Every single agency has hundreds, sometimes thousands of talent on their roster. And most agents just do like a shotgun effect. So... You know, they get they get auditions in and they just basically send it to as many of their talent as possible and they just blast out as many auditions in their direction. That's how that works. And if it's the industry and they're going to agents and agencies, they're going to be getting a lot of submissions, a lot of submissions. So it is not common for people to get blacklisted. It's not common for people to get blocked. It's not common for you to put out such a bad demo that it will ruin your future. That is not a thing. It's not something that you should be worried about. It's totally fine to put out the best demo that you can. And even if that's not amazing, even if that's not DreamWorks, Disney, Netflix quality, that's fine. That's totally fine. It's better to put out your best attempt that is an accurate portrayal and an accurate showcase of where you currently are and then constantly being improving rather than to just not put out anything at all. 
because there's always going to be a client at your level, which is not to say that you are, you know, that there's a lower level and you should be ashamed of it. No, there's all, there's tons of different levels. There's tons of different tiers when it comes to voice acting and yours might be down here where it's more, you know, video games that get submitted on steam or, you know, independent animation projects. And you'll just work on those until you're ready for a better demo. And that's fine. That's totally fine. If I, <laughs> I don't know if all of my original demos are even uh, still around, but I can promise you they were shit. They were horrible, terrible. And I posted them everywhere. I put them on every platform and I put them on my YouTube channel. They're probably not there anymore. I think I've, I've either removed them or I have maybe like set them to private. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen them in forever. Uh, but I've, I know that I started out with really, truly horrible demos that I made myself. And I don't think that I'm blacklisted. I don't think that I'm blocked. I don't think that anyone even remembers any of those. And it's fine. It's totally fine. So deep breath in, slow breath out. You'll be okay. You're not blocked. You're not blacklisted. As long as you're not a complete and total asshole. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't get a thumbs down, totally fine. Subscribe if you're new. Bell for notifications. And leave down in the comment section below. I'd like to see me cover any other topics. Or you can email me. That is also in the doobly-doo, the de description section thingy. Uh, you can ask me any questions. You can email me privately. Totally fine. Uh, and um, if you have any experience with being essentially blocked or blacklisted and you want to add to the conversation feel free to do that as well and uh, yeah it's gonna be it so until next time peace <laughs>